This is a little bit embarrassing, but I'm just going to show you real life because this is real life. We have four freezers, technically. Well, five, because we've got our one that's part of the fridge upstairs. You cannot can pureed pumpkin, but you can can cubed pumpkin. Can, 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 can. <laughs> anyway, I have a list just because I, I don't want to go astray and I don't want to say things I don't mean. Good morning, everyone. Today I wanna to do a pantry tour for you all of our bulk storage. Um, we are a family of five, and we store about six months to one year of food. We do this for a lot of reasons, which is would kind of make this video really, really long, but basically we do it for food security, we do it for economic reasons to just take advantage of the best prices, and we do it because it allows us to buy way healthier food. I have autoimmune diseases, and therefore our kids are exposed, and so it really matters what we put into our bodies. Anyway, that is tabled for another day. Um, let me show you what we get. Oh, and at the end of this video, if you are a Christian and if this is something that you have been chewing on, I am going to discuss our convictions as to whether or not this practice uh, is biblical. Um, I guess, spoiler alert, we are still doing this, so we do kind of land on the side that this is an okay thing to do. Um, so if you are interested, that will be at the end of the video and I'll do a little timestamp chapter doohickey thing at the bottom. <laughs> okay, let's get started. Okay, first we have our bulk buckets. We store a variety of dried goods. Basically, if it is available to buy in bulk, we probably do, um, just because we will eventually use it. So we have some baking things here. We have chocolate chips, bittersweet chocolate chips, which is a much smaller quantity because obviously we don't need that that often. We use this in replace of baking bars. You know, um, the baker's chocolate you can get, we just use bittersweet chocolate chips and it's cheaper and <laughs> stores well. Um, cocoa powder. We have two buckets of pasta from Azure that we are actually going to phase out. We prefer the pasta from Costco. Um, but anyway, we still have some that we need to eat there and there. We store white rice. We buy the Redmond salt that's in that bucket. We buy sugar. These are all flour because we bake most of our flour products from scratch. Um, buns, bread, what have you. It actually goes pretty quick, probably about 40 pounds a month. Um, so we do store quite a bit of that because that's a big staple in this house. And then here is oatmeal. I only have three buckets because it comes in a huge sack and it does not fit in two buckets. It's such a light item that um, I think it's a 50 pound bag, but the bag is huge. It just takes up so much volume. So three buckets it is. And then over here, this is a little bit embarrassing, but I'm just gonna show you real life because this is real life. We tried to get into grinding our own wheat and I don't have a very high quality grinder. Maybe someday I will try again when we have more resources to buy a better grinder like a Nutramil. But um, quite frankly, my grinder is not good and nothing I have been making has been good. So we tried the soft white wheat for certain things. We've tried hard red wheat, hard white wheat. We've tried it all and I'm kicking myself for buying the big bags. I really did not think that we would dislike this experiment as much as we have. So if you are about to embark on the same journey, may I suggest buying a pound and not 25 pounds <laughs> at a time? Okay, up here we have ice cream cones. We really like these for just like a quick night with the kids. We'll pull them out maybe once a week, uh, especially in the summer, and we'll do an ice cream night. I like the ingredients on these. This is one of the things we buy in bulk just because it's healthier and it's not always available in the store. So that is much cleaner than what you'll find in the store. It's still not a health food exactly, but, and as you'll see, there's a lot because they come in a case of 12, I think it is, 10 or 12, and so that's what's available. We really love the Costco tortilla chips. Um, those are a staple in meals and they're just good for snacks. We do canola oil. We usually often stock avocado oil too but my grocery budget has just run over a little bit the past few months and it's about, I think it's like $50 for um, a big gallon of avocado, organic avocado oil from Azure. We store a lot of apple cider vinegar. We not only cook with it, but we sometimes dump it in baths for a detox bath or something like that, especially when the kids are sick. So when we start going through it, we go through it really fast and then we'll usually have a lull for a few months, um, but they come in a case of four uh, to get a really cheap deal so um, that's why we have that much <laughs> okay we do store some paper products not super far ahead but we get them at Costco and so of course 
their big packs. Um, so I just keep that here. Same with diapers and whatnot. Oh, my children have been here. <laughs> we try to buy ahead just a little bit um, because that's a really rough thing to run out of. Okay, these shelves are a little embarrassing, but this is just real life, okay? I know that when you're starting your food storage, um, you just work with what you've got. You work within your budget. And the last thing, in my humble opinion, the last thing anybody should be doing is going into debt to store food. Um, so we were able to afford these cheap shelves. They are buckling and they're plastic. And I dream of having metal shelves, you know, like real sturdy, good storage shelves. But this is what we have and I'm grateful for what we have at this time. So it is what it is. <laughs> um, we store some kid snacks up here. I was able to get a bunch of these on sale. Uh, and so that's why we have so many of those. We store our coffee because that's also a pain to run out of. Maple syrup, olive oils are over here. This is honey. We buy it um, in a big thing from Azure and then I part it out so that it's not so much work when I need some more honey. This is, <laughs> these are for rice socks um, when we need them. We. I bought a bunch once because I thought I was going to make way more than I did. And so I just have some extra. And then we enjoy doing sushi nights every once in a while. We have quinoa, which I'm not sure if we will ever eat through. I've been trying so hard to get through these bags. I don't know if we'll buy this in bulk again because it's we just don't eat it that often. We like it, but it's like once a month, you know. Um, we try to stay ahead on vitamins because for whatever reason, our vitamins go out of stock. Like t they take turns going out of stock. And right now I'm out of my kids multivitamin which is just frustrating because it's you know like you try to be consistent and it's hard to source so that tells me that I probably need to get even more ahead on that when it comes back in stock because obviously we're running out these are really great for sick kids um, I feel good giving this to them it's not just empty sugar you know it's got a lot of vitamin C in there and it's good for them okay down here we have a lot of peanut butter. Um, Costco peanut butter is cheaper than Azure as far as I found. I would love to switch to, a switch to Azure, but um, it's just it's just not a great deal uh, for us. And then I have all our little bagged goods. We have beef gelatin. We make homemade jello with this. Um, if you've never cooked with beef gelatin, can I assure you it does not taste like beef. It's, it's flavorless. <laughs> um, it's the same thing. It's just a thickener, you know, like you would get in Jello in a box in the store. We have beans here. Kidney beans are back there. There's white beans, pinto beans. Um, I do often store those in a jar down here, um, but I have some pretty, pretty big canning projects coming up and I'm just gonna empty the bags. So there's no point in transferring them right now. We store pineapple juice because in the summer we make a lot of Hawaiian rolls. And so that's good to have on hand. Lemon juice just so we don't always have to worry about having fresh lemons. Cornmeal is really good to have. Um, some of this is just odds and ends that we acquired at some point and maybe won't stock forever. Um, we've got like bulgur and farro and then these are split peas, which we literally never cook with. Um, I will not store those again for sure. Um, and then bay leaves, whatever you do, <laughs> don't underestimate how much a pound of bay leaves is. Holy moly, that will fill like five gallon jars. Um, it is a lot. So moving on, we have elderberry back here somewhere. No, those are black beans. Here it is. We, we buy our elderberry in bulk. We make elderberry syrup year round and I use it as a base to drop vitamins in for my kids. And um, we do liquid zinc if there's colds going around, liquid vitamin D, that sort of thing. Okay, over here, this is like my pasta tomato area. We do tomato sauce, tomato paste. We love the Costco pasta. I've talked about this in our last Costco haul. Um, we like that it's Italian and not exposed to as much glyphosate as a pasta in the US would be. And it's organic. And I mean, it's cheap. It's from Costco. So win, win, win. Um, <laughs> we store diced tomatoes, whole peeled tomatoes. Um, when these first get stocked, like when we have a full case in, the shelf is comical. It's, I mean, you can see it's, it's bowing already. So I store some on the floor if I have to, but we're good right now. Um, 
Down here we have some juices. These are what I use to make jello if we need to make jello. We like the blueberry pomegranate kind. Um, I think that's what these all are. Sometimes we have grape juice in stock just as another option. Okay, over here we have our like Asian themed sauces. I have had a really hard time sourcing these, but I feel like I'm finally making progress. We have organic hoisin sauce, organic toasted sesame oil, and then organic uh, soy sauce. These are, these are from Azure. This one I had to buy in from Amazon. So those are those. We have white wine vinegar here. Nothing fancy, I think that's just from the store. And we store Worcestershire. Um, this is making me notice we're out of Frank's red sauce, red hot sauce, we usually store that too. Over here, I was so excited to find these at Azure. We do cream of chicken and cream of mushroom soup. It's such a convenience item, but it can have a lot of junk in it. But this brand from Azure is pretty good. Where are the ingredients? Where are you hiding? There. Very simple. We're out of the cream of mushroom right now. I think I have a case of those coming in our next haul. Okay, we do have a couple things of water just because we had some issues with our water for a while. Um, our fridge line freezes and then our Berkey wasn't up and running so we were just like without without water for a while. Um, so I got those back then. I don't know what I'm gonna use those for because now we have a Berkey and it takes care of us. So here we have ketchup. I've been trying to get a case of ketchup for a while from Azure. Fortunately, we don't go through it that fast, but um, I will buy, I think it's like an eight pack case. And then over here we have pasta sauce just from Costco. We use that in curries um, and for quick lunches for the kids. If we're gonna have a family spaghetti night, I will make it from scratch, but we do use some of this canned sauce every once in a while. Here we have this comical cart. We had it upstairs and my one-year-old kept hanging on it. And so the shelves are very bent downwards. They're not really supposed to be. <laughs> and so, what do you do with an almost broken shelf? You load it with heavy cans. We have our coconut milk, our um, canned corn. We're trying to transition out of having our corn in the freezer just for the sake of freezer space. So we're gonna try this out. And then of course, mustard. Um, this should be about a year of mustard. I mean, it's not like we eat a ton of mustard, but it comes in this three pack for a cheaper price per container. So why not? Okay, up here we store our spices for the sake of brevity. I'm not gonna go all into those. Um, basically any spice we use, we buy in, in bulk in about a pound quantity. Um, and then we have quart jars upstairs that we usually pour them into. And then we've got little little half pints that we pour them into um, that are like in our cooking space. Um, so we sort of have a three tier system. I do that because I kept running out of spices. And so this helps me get a little more breathing room. Since herbs are so light, a pound of an herb is a lot. So like this is four ounces and I consider this to be bulk. I mean, that'll last a really long time. So we made the mistake I mentioned earlier of buying a pound of bay leaves and it's too much. I mean, even with storing some in our buckets and gifting them, like I just have, I will have basil, I'm sorry, I will have bay leaves for years. Over here, we just have some odds and ends um, goods. We do parchment sheets. This is an awesome brand. They're pre-cut, so you just pull them out and cook with them. We have our dog supplements. These I also struggle to stay ahead of, so it's really important that we have these stocked down here. These are paper snack and sandwich bags. I like these a lot because they let us, they helped us get off of a source of plastic, um, which I do try to do when possible. We have foil here. Most of this is from Azure, not the dog stuff, but the, you know, this brand, the If You Care. And we do still use plastic Ziploc bags. I have tried a variety of alternatives and I'm just not in love with anything yet. We bought some of the silicone bags um, and the seals don't last for us. So you have to fold them over and put a clip on them and then they're still not airtight. Um, also, I tried a compostable variety. I'll show you those when we get to our freezers. And I'm just not, I'm just not sold on them. They sort of break down a little bit in the freezer um, and they're just not our favorite thing. So we do keep these and use these on occasion. This is just odds and ends. At some point I'm gonna make candles and these are water straws that we had in our emergency kits that are sort of dismantled right now and they need some work. So I just stuck those in there. 
we have four freezers technically well five because we've got our one that's part of the fridge upstairs we have a freezer that is going to be dedicated to beef one to pork one to chicken and then one to like other things you know we buy tortillas and cheese and veggies and whatnot so let me show you that top of here i have a big pot that i use for canning as well as canning lids canning lids that are stocked for this summer um this is our non-meat freezer for the most part um we have parmesan here that we buy in bulk pepper jack cheeses tortillas this is yeast we buy it in a five pound bag and then i freeze it these are cherries that i froze last summer they really need to get consumed soon we're working on another bag upstairs this is our butter shelf it's just running a little bit low right now we really like this kind it's pretty pricey but um having high quality cooking fats is pretty important um especially for health reasons so we do splurge on that we have a shelf of spinach i just started buying these peppers and I really like them. I will build up our stash of these in the future. We have hash brown potatoes and then this is some garlic that I preserved and froze. Okay this freezer is actually brand new <laughs> like we got it yesterday. Um, we have a half cow coming and we needed more space for it um, since we have started storing a lot more things other than meat. So right now this is sort of just um, a draft. <laughs> should we say i'm gonna adjust things when our cow comes in this is pork that still needs to be used for my last pig this is just lard that i need to render um, i just haven't had time to do that i am trying to start storing some lunch meats for easy lunches my kids will finally eat it so praise the lord for that here we have hot dogs which my kids have suddenly stopped eating for no reason um so we have hot dogs there we buy this for gumbo um, and these come in, a, I think it's an eight pack and it's cheaper per pound. It's still pretty pricey. So we only eat this maybe once a month. If I still have room after the, the cow is here, I would like to use this shelf for um, freezer cooking meals. I, I damaged this when I was uh, moving it the other day. So we're going to have to eat that soon. Um, but I like, I like this spot for freezer cooking meals. I would like to do more, but I don't like when they're just shoved in random places wherever they can fit in the freezer because then I forget about them so it would be nice to have this shelf designated for that sort of thing um, okay empty 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 because beef needs to come and then down here I would like to do seafood once again space permitting I'm sort of waiting to, to bulk up on this because I want to see how much freezer space we will have in the end having this side-by-side -side fridge freezer in the basement has been such a blessing we live in a rental house and this belongs to the rental house so we won't have this forever but it has shown me that I really like having something like this. Um, we store like special drinks for, um, you know, barbecues or just a really nice Friday night when we want to hang out with the kids and do something special. I have my kombucha hotel, my SCOBY hotel, whatever it's called in here. Um, and then we buy our milk somewhat in bulk. Obviously you can't buy that too far ahead, but we do buy five or six gallons at the beginning of the month. And the surplus comes down here. We buy this jelly from Azure. And we have that up here and the oh and we buy eggs in bulk um, we usually buy i don't know five or six of these at the beginning of the month and it's amazing how we go through them even just as a family of five the beer is from our landlord <laughs> they, it was left here and we just haven't done anything with it because we have three kids and life is busy i should add that we are out of our five pound loaves of cheese we have an azure delivery coming pretty soon here but we do buy our cheddar and our mozzarella in five pound loaves um, usually two at a time of each kind and those will live in here unless we need them upstairs this is what we affectionately refer to as our chicken freezer um, these are these are the bags I was telling you about earlier the compostable bags I don't love them they really got stuck to the chicken because they're compostable right so when moisture gets in there it does slowly start to break down the bag and I just don't love them. And it's hard to dunk them in water um, to thaw the chicken because it's just gross. <laughs> so that's where we're at on those. Our chicken is, in a perfect world, it would be pasture, local, organic, all of that. 
chicken was one of the first things that we were priced out of when everything started getting really, really expensive. So we buy our chicken from a farm in North Carolina. We drive down to get it and we buy it in bulk. They, at least they minimally process it. So it's not injected with a bunch of stuff like maybe a grocery store cut of chicken would be. Um, but it's not organic and I'm sure they're raised in hen houses, uh, that sort of thing. But this is what we are able to do right now. And hopefully in the future we will be able to change our approach a little bit. But anyway, we have breasts. We did, this time we did um, boneless skinless breasts and boneless skinless thighs. And then a little bit from last time we have um, bone on, skin on, thighs, and drumsticks that we are working through from last time. All right, before I show you the things that we can ourselves, this is our pork freezer. Our pork pickup is in two weeks, so it's currently just cleaned out and staged and ready to go. These have made a big difference in keeping things stocked. We just keep these here and the freezer can still close fine. Um, I could not survive without having some sort of baskets in our deep freezers because everything just gets jostled around. Even if you think you're so organized when you first put it in, a few months in, you are like not gonna be able to find anything, at least in my experience. So um, baskets help. Okay, into our canning area. This is also our laundry room, but we have these awesome wooden shelves in here. Um, and since all of this is glass, this was the spot that got devoted to this. Um, we do salsa, jalapenos. This was a beef stew I did. I don't know if I'll do it again because we haven't been very eager to eat this, but it was really good. Like when we do finally like, oh, okay, fine, we'll have canned beef stew for dinner and we heat it up, it's good. There's nothing wrong with it. It tastes great. Um, it's just <laughs> like, it's hard to have the discipline to eat this instead of running to grab carry out pizza. If you know what I mean, just being real here. Um, we have applesauce that we can. Applesauce is so hard to plan for. One year I canned so much applesauce and my kids ate a quart a week and I could not keep up with it. And I said, okay, I'll do a ton next year. And then the next year my kids didn't really like applesauce. And so I did just a little bit this year and now we're somewhere in the middle. I don't know, I don't know what I'm gonna do this year yet. This is a mix of vegetable broth and beef broth. We can peaches and pears because it's so much cheaper that way um, than buying them already done, especially because we buy organic. These are mixes that we make up for simplicity. We often have a cookie mix here, um, but we've been using that, so we need to replenish that. The rest is cornbread, and then the little jar is a waffle mix that we'll pull out on Sunday mornings. We have white beans, chickpeas, kidney beans, black beans, refried beans. Um, beans just are my favorite thing to can. They're my favorite thing to have canned. They're not my favorite thing to actually go through the canning process. It takes forever, I feel like, um, especially with a manual canner, but I love having them on hand and they save a ton of money and it's a great way to reduce your waste because, you know, you go through a few cans a meal and then you're, you're not throwing those cans in the garbage. You're just washing your jars and reusing them. So we can pumpkin. Um, you cannot can pureed pumpkin, but you can can cubed pumpkin. Can, 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 can. <laughs> anyway, you can can cubed pumpkin and it's so soft that as soon as you pour it out for like a pumpkin bread or whatever and whisk it up with your eggs and milk or whatever you're using, it, it goes right into a puree. You don't have to do anything extra to it. So this is a really good convenience item. And then these are canned sloppy joes right here. They're actually really good too, but same story as the beef stew. We just have a hard time <laughs> like, okay, let's go grab a can of sloppy joes. We need to work on our mentality a little bit. We're spoiled. Back here, I have some fire cider. I have a few jars of this. I made a lot. Um, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's very, very spicy and I'm not quite sure what to mix with it yet to take it. Um, I'm still learning about fire cider, but we have some and it was fun to experiment with. Okay, that is everything. Are you still here? <laughs> that took way longer than I thought it was gonna take. Um, I, I always think it's gonna go quick and then there's just so much to say um, and I feel like I'm still not saying a lot. I'm trying hard not to go into detail, but I probably went into detail. So anyway, um, we're gonna move into the biblical discussion if that is something that you are interested in. Um, if not, thank you so much for hanging out and I will see you next time. Okay, so now let's talk about whether or not food storage is biblical and I want to caveat this discussion with these are my convictions and I would encourage you to 
if you are chewing on this question yourself, I would encourage you to take it to the Lord in prayer, to seek your own elders, your own biblical counsel. Um, please don't, please don't just take my word for it. Um, I think this is one of those issues, like many issues in the Bible, that can be debated different directions. And if you have different convictions, I do not mean to squash your convictions. Um, by all means, the last thing I would want to do is cause somebody to do something that they believe is sin. Um, so all that being said, we have also wrestled with this question in our house, especially because every once in a while our church hosts a Q&A. And there was a question posed where somebody asked, you know, something, I, I don't remember the exact verbiage, but it was something along the lines of, should we be storing food? You know, um, is that something that is biblical or in the Bible or whatever? And to, to simply just boil down how our elders answered, they said, ultimately, we should be trusting in the Lord for our provision. I agree with that. Um, this was a brief Q&A situation. And I think that there's a lot more to that discussion that just couldn't be done on that stage. So um, we took that to the Lord in prayer and we sort of elaborated on that within our own convictions. And I will share that with you. I have a list just because I, I don't wanna go astray and I don't wanna say things I don't mean. With all that being said, the first point I would like to make is there were very clear times in the Bible where the Lord instructed his people to do very specific things with their food. Um, the most obvious one is in Exodus when he tells everybody to gather their manna daily. Do not store up any extra. Trust on me for your provision. I feel that that is a very specific circumstance that obviously doesn't um, translate into every modern situation today. I mean, by that, by that regard, would we be allowed to have gardens if we were going to be that um, literal with the text? If I felt like I was under a biblical instruction from the Lord to not be doing this and to be buying my food daily or what have you, I would obey. I don't feel like that pertains to my walk today, but others may land somewhere different and that is okay. The second point I would like to make is in regards to the quantity of food that we store. We store six months to a year of items um, and this also somewhat depends on what quantity they are sold in in bulk goods. So for instance, I showed those ice cream cones. That is at least a year of ice cream cones, but they come in a case of 12. So that is where we land. Um, and this, the six months to a year of food storage historically is not that crazy. Um, think about when people used to raise their own meat much more readily, when family farms were much more uh, prevalent, you would slaughter your hog, cure him, and store store the hog for the whole year, you know? Um, and that wasn't considered doomsday prepping or uh, hoarding or anything crazy like that. Um, same with if you had an abundant garden harvest. Sure, you might share some with your friends, but then it would be prudent to preserve the rest and keep it in your pantry. Um, so I don't feel like six months to a year really falls under the guise of um, doomsday prepping or or not trusting in the Lord for where our next meal will, will come from. Basically, I just don't I don't think that it's a, an excessive measure. Even even flour sacks, you know, in the olden days they sold flour in sacks, um, and that wasn't considered excessive to buy. So that's where I come out on that point as well. Okay, the third point is that obviously this would put us in a place to be a blessing. Um, when COVID first hit, we were the recipients of blessings because we were unprepared. Um, I had like a cup of flour uh, and the stores shut down and everybody was terrified. I have an autoimmune condition. Um, I had a young baby. Like I did not want to be going to the store. And even if I did go to the store, there wasn't even flour to be found. Um, and people blessed us with their surplus. And so this, I view this now as we are positioning ourselves to where if something like that ever happens again, we can be a blessing. I do think it would be sinful if something happened like that and there were people around us in need and we did not share. Um, I do think that that would be holding on to fear and not letting the Lord provide us, provide for us. So um, so that is another another reason that we do this. 
The fourth thing is that it allows us to be wise consumers. There's a tale in the Bible. Uh, forgive me, I do not have the exact verse. There's a tale in the Bible where God gives three men a coin or something like that. It's it's mon it's money, and he tells them to go do as they would. And one man buries it, saves it, doesn't do anything with it. Um, and then another man invests it, and then another man invests it even better. Um, I think that speaks to how we treat our resources. Um, and I'm elaborating here, so if you disagree with my conviction, totally fine. But the Lord has given us money to provide for our family. And that money sitting in our bank account is not outpacing inflation. And so I, I view just having it in the bank as the man burying his money in the ground. And sitting in our pantry, we can at least lock in prices that are lower, you know. Um, my, our bag of oats will last us six months and we'll be shielded from oat inflation, you know, that sort of thing. So I am, I do think that it's possible to buy too much for our pantry and that that would be unwise. That would be maybe getting close to burying it in the ground, metaphorically speaking. Um, but I do think that having a bulk pantry that allows us to take advantage of deals um, and bulk prices and that sort of thing. I do think that allows us to be a wise consumer and a wise steward of our resources. Okay, the last point I wanna make is in regards to trusting in the Lord for our provision, I think it's a little naive to assume that just because we have six months to a year, that if the world like went absolutely crazy, that just because of what we have right here, we would be shielded entirely from hardship. Um, no doubt this would certainly help if grocery stores, if we went through something similar to COVID, you know, we could sort of lay low for a while, wait to see what's going on. But there are so many other scenarios of terrible things that could happen in the world where we will undoubtedly still have to trust in the Lord for his provision, not just for food, but for water. We currently do not have the money to invest in substantial enough water to where we would not feel the impact of an attack on our water grid. Um, we would have to trust in the Lord for our safety with, you know, potential attacks from abroad or wars or what have you. Um, there are other economic hardships where we would have to trust in the Lord for his provision, not to mention just the provision of wisdom and peace and the protection of our family all over the U.S. Um, and the, the world, really. We've got family in foreign countries. So I, I do think that... I don't think that us storing this detracts from our trust in the Lord for his provision. So that is where we come out on this. Um, if you are struggling with this, um, please just take this as food for thought. Please do not take this as scripture. It's obviously not. This is just, this is just one Christian studying and reaching their best conclusion possible, you know, based on my life experiences and my interpretation of the text and the people I've talked to. So, um, Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. I hope that this was a useful discussion to you and a useful tour for you. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.